everybody. This is Nathan Allabuck, and welcome to the podcast where we get into people's stories and go down a bunch of rabbit holes about what's really good in the world. <laughs> For today's episode, I sat down with Bob Huntsberger, aka the idiot college intern Steve on Twitter. <laughs> So most of you already know I work as a social media manager for an ad agency, and the main client I rep is Steakum Meats. So with that said, I did this whole hashtag verify Steakum campaign last fall, which started with a bunch of my Twitter friends, shout out to Twinja, and it culminated in the account getting verified and sort of going viral this past January. And in that time, I got overwhelmed by the workload, so I brought on Bob as an intern to help with everything, and he then started managing the Idiot College Intern Steve Twitter account on top of that. Also, on top of doing voiceover work, uh, coming up with campaign ideas, and helping with a bunch of other areas in our creative department. So, yeah. In this episode, we basically get into the origin story of Steve, and We talk about just life working in social media. So prepare to laugh, prepare to cry, and prepare to meet the legendary idiot college intern, Steve. And we're live. Steve. Thank you for coming on the podcast. In the building, man. I'm happy to be here. Thanks for having me. The real voice of Steve. It's beautiful, isn't it? Can you do the Steve voice that you've been doing? <laughs> yeah, it's just like it's just like a high version of like my voice. What I imagine like I sounded like as like a 13 year old when I don't know, like I got a, a Charizard or something. Right. It's, uh, <laughs> hey guys, it's a beautiful day. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> Steak him's the best. <laughs> Let me get some of that beef. <laughs> the, it's so perfect. It's good. All right. So everybody, for context sake, I'll have explained a little bit of this in the intro. Oh, okay. But so you are at the idiot intern indeed on Twitter. So your actual name is Bob. Correct. That is correct. <laughs> <laughs> that is a that is a fact. So I'll here I'll lay out the sort of origin story of how you got to be where you are, and then you can jump in and give the Steve story from your perspective. Okay, okay? The, the official uh, Steve Cannon. Yes. Right. Okay. Okay. So I, the Stakeum guy, started managing the account last August, so 2017, and in the um, I, I want to say it was September or October, I started. You know, as I'm getting used to Twitter, making some just dumb online mistakes. So along the way, I needed a scapegoat mm-hmm. because I was yeah. I was I would post something I shouldn't have posted or say something that maybe wasn't the right thing to say. And I used this character that I made up called the idiot college intern Steve on the account Beautiful. as as the reason <laughs> why I did something stupid. So I did two posts about it maybe i think in like october and they took off and everybody is jumping on this dog pile of just you know going after steve ah steve's such an idiot steve's the worst all this stuff thought it was hilarious and that's pretty much what laid the groundwork then so then we as, a, as an account as stakem's corporate account we got verified in the beginning of January, which was like month a four month long process or so of this hashtag verify Stakem quote unquote campaign mm-hmm. on Twitter, which was basically just memes and people having fun through this whole thing. And uh so at that point we started to get a little bit more viral attention. We were getting like ten over ten thousand followers in less than two months. So it was kinda blowing up a little bit out of my um control and a little bit out of my grasp to to deal with all this so we knew we had to bring on a real life intern so Mm -hmm. enter bob (laughs) what what was going on well it was um, a january morning (laughs) and i i was scouring the internet uh i i found uh you know the the listing for the you know the intern opportunity and i came in and i interviewed um just like basic stuff i'm not a, a marketing insider you know i'm coming from outside the 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 system here, but I came in and I talked and uh, we discussed basic ideas, 
And you guys asked in the interview, said, are, are you cool if we call you Steve? <laughs> <laughs> jokingly, but first, you know, first question. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and it's important, and this is a, a good lesson for anyone that's going to be interviewing. Is if they want to call you a different name in the interview, always say yes. You can, ref, you know, fix it later. But so um, I, I came in to to kind of help out with some of that, you know, massive yeah. stake. It was like an overflowing of, yeah. of too much going on on the account. It was it was it was big stuff for sure, and, and you know, it's a ton of work for community management and stuff. So I came in with the intention of kind of helping, you know, share that workload with you. And we started doing the the Steve account and the the brief was basically just you know, he's you know, he's an idiot kind of a, a scapegoat and you know, this guy we blame for things. So I had I had found that stock photo right. of Steve's face Which on is so good. I'll start, just on I think I literally typed in college kid or like college boy yeah. or something like that and it was on the second page i literally remember searching and being like i found this so fast and mm-hmm. it's the perfect it image like and there was a couple images of him too like doing a couple of different things we had a couple faces to work with and i think i made like you were starting on monday i think and i yeah. made the account that with the weekend before yeah so like a couple of days before i was like hey bob like a, like i texted you or something and said mm-hmm. hey I made this Twitter account. Like, so I, I, that's right, because I wasn't going to be at work. Remember? Uh, yeah. You, I wasn't there yeah, for your first a, day. A, a studio or something. Yeah. We, we, like, didn't have the password or anything. Yeah. It was, that was a, a wild first day. That yeah. was a mess. Yeah. That was, um, so, yeah, the, the first day, I, you know, I, I come into work, and uh, I'm ready to gear up on Twitter. I got some some great ideas, and, and I don't have, we don't have the password. And, and Nate, Nate's... Um, I guess you're at the studio, right? I forget. I yeah, yeah. Well, I was recording. Something. I was yeah. recording. Yeah, yeah. And I yeah. felt so bad because I'm texting you, and I know like you're in the studio working and stuff, and I'm just like, "Hey, uh, I I need the, <laughs> the the password for the Twitter." Because right now I'm kind of just sitting here yep. uh, looking at the computer. Um, but eventually it kind of worked out because we turned that into like a, a gag thing where the next day. I owned up to forgetting the password like, right. as as the character Because we had been building up that that was going to be your first day. Yeah. And then we couldn't do anything. Right. <laughs> and it was so – and it, it worked out, like, perfectly because then it was just – his introduction to the, the Twitter world was just this big, like, my bad, guys. I, I messed up. I lost the password or yep. whatever. Um, and then from there, it was just a matter of, like, developing the voice, which – uh, I, I hesitate to use the the word iconic <laughs> <laughs> because Steve Steve's not necessarily an icon, but um, oh, dude, Steve is definitely <laughs> an icon. Someday people yeah. are listening to this from Twitter right now, like what? Steve, Steve's the most iconic person I know. <laughs> okay, so Steve's basically the the modern Madonna. I, I get that, um, <laughs> basically. <laughs> but yeah, so um, the idea is y- you want to create. Uh, a recognizable tone. And that's that's difficult to do sometimes when all you have is just the words. There's no sound or anything. So right. when you talk about consistency, it's just a matter of getting that grammar and tone. And, and for Steve, of course, it was the, the punctuation. Yeah. And that was something that just initially just annoyed people. Mm-hmm. The fact that, like, he would do double exclamation points. Right. And, um, and, and just, like, to, to sort of, like, prequel all this, like, you didn't have any experience... In this, like you had no experience in social media, right. marketing management, and like just for context sake too, like our agency, it's not a big city agency with hundreds of people working here. It's a small town, yeah. suburban agency, um, like 20 or so employees. So it's like a pretty tight knit group of people. And you came aboard, you know, like you, like we had known you like through just like friends of friends, yeah. basically. And knew you were a funny guy and a smart guy and you were you're in you're in school for creative writing. Right. Right. So like you had this background. We were we just thought this is a great opportunity for someone who has this creative writing background to sort of expand on this character. So then yeah. all this punctuation and voice stuff, like you you really were at the ground level then developing it from day yeah, one. Because like I said, so, yeah, sorry to interrupt. No, yeah, that's, go ahead. that's it's good <laughs> good backstory. It's important. Um because yeah, initially the idea was just that like basically Steve's an idiot, right? Yeah, that was, it wasn't it intern. wasn't much it wasn't fleshed out at all. Yeah. yeah. And and from there you, you kinda want to figure out and uh, you know, w- what's the best way to be an idiot or or anything <laughs> like that. Like, because you, you don't you, you can go one way where it's just like, oh, everything he does is just super uh, annoying and he messes up all the time and does right. all this stuff. But um, when you consider his relationship to 
like the Steakum brand uh, on on Twitter, it was fairly edgy at times. I mean, right. they they're also wholesome as well, but um, they get a little edgy in that, and they exist in that kind of weird Twitter universe. It's like, what's the perfect kind of foil to that? It's just this relentlessly positive. Um, naive kind of goofball who's about as edgy as a, a gaseous sphere. <laughs> <laughs> Especially just because you have what you're working with is in the title, you're idiot college intern Steve. Right. So in the name, you're already like you are. It's already being a given that you're being treated as an idiot. And the stock photo is just this overly excitable, yeah. really corny looking kid. So that's like the ground level of what you're working with. So whatever you sort of come up with on top of that, that's that's always there following you around. Yeah. You know, that's the that's the face of all this. Exactly. Yeah. And, and <laughs> I wonder, you know, and we've talked about this before, who the the the, the model was that took that <laughs> I know, photo. I want to find him so bad. <laughs> we, we need to pitch like a, a Finding Steve documentary. I think that would be fantastic. That would be amazing. Um, but because he, his face is like in every... Yeah, pretty much every meme or yeah. thing I make, and it's become super associated with this this goofball. Yeah, he's been plastered all over Twitter for like five months now. Yeah, six months. And like we've had some like big interactions with like like, like you know like the the Mark Hamels. Hey, right. and... Mark, Mark Hamill. <laughs> Mark. Okay, everybody, listen to this. As the person who's running the Stakem account, obviously my job is not only just community management and PR and all that type of stuff, but I a lot of our whatever you want to call it, our ROI, our return on investment for even being able to do this in the first place is garnering impressions and engagements with audiences. So the whole, you know, at, at some level, you know, we have to be marketing to get people's attention in some capacity. So whether that's through memes or just funny tweets or community, you know, that's a part you know, whether or not that's a cornerstone of like our actual community online, like it's a part to what we do because it's the part of the job. Yep. So I am constantly reaching out to celebrities like William Shatner and mm -hmm. The Rock and all these random people just to give me attention because it garners that sort of wow factor and gets it could potentially get picked up by a news outlet. Right. It could get a lot of it's, it's and it's just fun. Mm -hmm. It's just fun and it's funny. Other people get involved then. So I had reached out to Mark Hamill at least a few times and he's <laughs> never got back to me. And I had a blue check mark, which means he's getting a separate tab of notifications just with blue check marks yeah. and he's ignoring me. Yeah. And you, Steve somehow got him to tweet at you. <laughs> that, and it was, I remember I got a little uh, uh, excited about that because, of course, I didn't expect him to return the tweet. It was just mostly a thing for, like, the people in the community right. that might think it's fun, yeah, and, yeah. like a reference for them to enjoy. And and when he, he tweeted at me, this, the same thing happened with, like, Henry Winkler, too. You, you don't right. expect him to Fo come back. A.K.A. Fonzie. Yeah, Arthur Fonzarelli, <laughs> the man himself. Um but it's just one of those great things. I think even, you know, because obviously people like uh, you know the Mark Hamels and the, the William Shatners and the the Henry Winklers. Yes, they uh, they they get tweeted at a lot. Oh yeah, know, that's the, what I'm saying all day from all these people. So I I guess something about you know the the Steve energy is just f easy and fun to kind of riff off of as like you know, a different account or a different uh, person who's coming in. Yeah. He's not necessarily asking for, um, like, a retweet or asking anything like that. He's usually doing – it's something fun that he's doing. Yeah. And it's easy to engage with and participate in. Yeah, it's very good cop, bad cop with Stakem where right. you get, like you were saying, it's sort of like a foil – mechanism where you know Stakem might tweet something out that's whatever trying to be funny or nihilistic or yeah. over the top and then steve comes in just being overly excited and annoying sounding mm -hmm. and Stakem gets to just be like shut up steve yeah like, sit down and, steve and pe people love it <laughs> it's you just know? a great back and forth <laughs> called it's really it's like this sort of digital theater where there's you know you have a line and then i'll come in and you know, react to that and yeah. creates an energy that 
you know, the, the, the audience, I air quoted that, you can't see it, but the audience, air yeah. quote, that really, really digs on, and it's a fun dynamic. And so sure. many people think we're the same person. I know. They think that I am some kind of psychotic nut job sitting yeah. at two computers <laughs> to type in these it's responses crazy. back and forth. I know, and I'm just, and in my head, I'm thinking, like, there, there's no way, you know, there's just... There's You'd have to have multiple personality disorder. Yeah, like, and, that's... and just, like, from the sheer, like, amount of work, especially early on, like, when I first came on, and it was, right. you, you were doing doing a ton on Steak and I was doing a ton on the Steve account. I, I don't know how they think that, like, you can just I know. churn out, like, content it's in, so much in content. like, three minutes. It's, it, it is. It's a lot of content. Like, I was looking at the total tweets that I've made for Steak em a couple months ago, and it was insane because going month by month from when I started in August to, like, say now or yeah. whatever, comparatively to other brands, like, popular brands that are pretty active on Twitter, and this isn't to knock them at all. It's just kind of speaks to the frequent, like the high level frequency of our community. But yeah. I have tweeted. So when I first got this account, I think the number it was less than five thousand times that we had tweeted. All I know is that like the analytics, they from December and January specifically, right around the time it was going viral from the whole Verify Stakem campaign, I had been tweeting six thousand times a month. That's wild. 6,000. So, I mean, and that's each month. So then, you know, months after that kind of teetered out a little bit, went down to like 4,000, 2,000. Now we're kind of leveled out because I'm dealing with a lot more DMs and a lot more other yep. st- other projects that are sort of part of the account. But, mm-hmm. yeah, to think just and, and comparatively, you know, a lot of other accounts that I was looking at because I was just I was just curious. I was like, how much do other accounts tweet out? Like it was fractional. Yeah. To that, just generally. And again, not a knock on other brands doing it. It, was just, it just speaks to the output that we were we were really trying early on to make the Stakem account community into something special. And yeah, it, and it became sure. something special. And then you jumped in in January. And because, again, because I had such an overflow of getting back to people and I couldn't deal with a lot of the um, interaction stuff. So I needed to almost like take the attention away from the yeah. page and bring it over to you and then you started to become this daily responder to people you yeah. know like giving that feedback loop so do you want to kind of get into some of the like the relational stuff like kind of how you've developed because your your account went from i mean how, what were the numbers on it right now like right, followers I, I think um hovering just around like 3700 right now wow okay and, and it jumped pretty quick too like yeah. right when you got the account it was less than a month you had like fifteen hundred followers. Yeah, didn't you? It, it jumped up pretty pretty quickly. People people dug on that. Yeah. So so over the course of that time, like from January to now, we're in June. Yeah. You know, what what have been what have been some of the relationships like on that account? Because I know you, you're DMing people all day. There's a lot of regulars that come just for Steve. They don't even care about Stakem. They come just uh, yeah, for Steve. Which is so. an, an interesting thing for sure. Because I think obviously at at the the jump of you know, at the inception, Steve Seption at the beginning. <laughs> Steve right? Seption. Um, most most of the followers were just you know kind of hopping over from the Stakem account and seeing right, what right. what's what's popping off with this this intern kid. Um, but as you you know uh, just get to tweeting and managing the community, which was a, a big thing, I I tried to respond. Especially one of the the earlier things I did was like it was like National Compliments Day or something. Mm-hmm. So anyone who commented, I I gave them like a uh, a compliment, and I tried to make it special and, and unique to them and stuff like that. So, pe- like the opposite of a Wendy's roast. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it really is. It's like, hey, who who wants to hear something nice about themselves? And so, <laughs> and you know, it, it definitely attracts uh, people to it. Um, I think probably from the beginning, like the the first couple followers that were really um, interacting and and helping to kind of boost and helping me shape the Steve voice and the Steve character, a lot of them still um, come around today. You know, on, on the, the post, they'll say something like, nice one, Steve, or oh, boy, Steve, or, <laughs> you know, whatever, <laughs> right, right, right. whatever he's saying. Um, but, uh, you know, the relationships uh, are just such an important part of what the Steve character is. And I think, I think Twitter's a weird place. Right. Yes, it <laughs> Most is. Most of Bob. the time, it can, it can get pretty hostile um, and 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 stuff pretty quickly. And I think Steve represents for a lot of people like, and stake them too to an uh, an extent when, when they get wholesome. You right. know, um, it represents just like a, like a, almost like a safe place. You yeah. know, a place it's an oasis. Can, it, it is in this in this you know hellscape of Twitter. Um, 
<laughs> but, uh, you know, so I'll get people that'll DM me uh, on the Steve account. I say me and Steve, like we're the same person. I mean, now. you are pretty <laughs> yeah, much. <right. laughs> These are weird blurred lines. <laughs> yeah. I mean, there's like, there's one person um, who will just DM me, uh, you know, every couple of days with like a really like a, a pun, like a kind of a, a goofy pun. The one was like, you know, the two stakes uh, were dating and they brought their, their family uh, the, the, they brought the one over to the, the other's family and said, I really want you to, to meet my, you know, boyfriend. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know, right, and right. Just, and someone that just does that, like, I'll get that one, uh, like, a pun like that every couple of days from them. Or I'll get, um, sometimes people just say, hey, like, I appreciate this tweet, or, um, you know, it means a lot. I've been going through a rough time. And, you know, and you get those on, on yeah, Stake, Yeah, yeah, uh, we talk about that a lot, how it's insane how many people – DM us about their mental health yeah. issues and their family issues and their relationship issues, yeah. literally asking for advice. It's and it's it's super like, um, what am I trying to think? Like, like it's an honor to, that they feel safe right. enough to come and and discuss this with you. At the same time, it's like really heartbreaking that these people, you know, are reaching out to like yeah. brands. It's bizarre because yeah. why would you? Like, yeah. like I think the initial if you're someone who's privileged enough to have whatever you want to call it, like a, like a family, friend, community group who's right. supportive of you, then you look at something like that as if from the outside, like, that's crazy. Why would somebody ever message a brand asking, like, about such a personal thing? But for a lot of people, they live in very isolated situations, yeah. whether it's in the middle of nowhere or maybe they got rejected by their peers or yeah. they just have nobody to go to. So that's why a lot of the, you see a lot of these avatars as Twitter people on Twitter as a profile headers because they don't want to expose their identity it's they're living a life online because they don't have that communal right. relationship status in their real life yeah and and like i said it's it's great that we can uh sort of provide that to an extent for some of these people i think that's probably one of the most rewarding aspects of of the the job um second only of course to like people retweeting the memes right <laughs> <laughs> the, me the memes are important. They're very important. <laughs> it, it is weird because it becomes this almost armchair psychology thing where yeah. people are sending you their problems and you have no – you either ignore them, you you know, you know, sort of push the conversation in a different direction, or you answer them. Yeah. And if you answer them, you are playing this dicey game of I'm not a professional. If you need actual medical attention, find it. You know, yeah, you, you, sure. you have to sort of – let people know, hey, you know, I'm here to talk. You know, I'll be here for you in the capacity I can be. But at the same time, if you really do need a therapist or a doctor or whatever, yeah. please do whatever. You, I don't know what people's circumstances are, but please do whatever you can. Because it is a really weird burden when someone but unloads sure. about their eating disorder or their depression or their abusive um, boyfriend or whatever it is. I mean, that's a, it's a weird thing when people are messaging this and stuff it, to you. And it's like, you know, when you juxtapose it to the fact that, like, as you're reading that, you know, you know, you're working on whatever, uh, photoshopping Steve's head on right. onto a matador right. or something, right. you know? Yeah. It's, um, it is. And, it, you know, it's it's something I've, I try to respond to, to everyone like that. Um, and and usually I'll, I'll, I've added the tag, but, you know, this is just, you know, my opinion. I'm just kind of talking with you here. If if you need help, definitely reach out to a professional, because like you said, I mean that is a kind of a, a heavy burden, and it's not something that we necessarily have training to handle. No, we have we don't have the tools <laughs> like, at all. Yeah. We have PR tools, and we have and we have. I think this this to a degree. I'd like to hear your thoughts on this, but I I do in some odd capacity feel that this speaks to the. Not just the culture at large right now, how we live in such a strange time on the internet, which is sort of obvious and everybody talks about it, but more so just to the fact that as a social media manager or someone who manages a brand or a, mm -hmm. or whatever, a, a public figure, whatever you want to call it, like someone who's online frequently, you do have a, a level of responsibility to tend to people's needs. And I think there's a tendency, it, it's easy to look at the trolls. It's easy to look at, like we talked, sort of we hinted, you, you were hinting earlier about just how it's a hellscape of hate. You know, there's a lot of yeah. polarization, political hate uh, all over Twitter. For sure. A lot of tribalism. You know, you see people like us, you know, the brands that we interact with. There's, we have so many people following us from the alt-right 
to it's like far leftists. Yeah, like it's it's, it's the everywhere. entire spectrum. It's, yeah, so it you is see, wild see all these at. pockets of people and how they hate each other, and you have to sort of navigate. You you have to be an individual who's okay navigating that, and to to a de- to a to some degree separating yourself in a way where you can be quote unquote objective, which just means you know at least moderately able to handle yourself as, as a brand or whatever in those right. situations. But then at the same time, you do have to be empathetic enough to read the room and to heart, you know, take, take care of those relationships and, and really watch out for how you're coming across to others. Cause there's a lot of those situations where you might have an opinion, whether it's a political issue or a reaction from somebody and you, you get a gut reaction to say, Oh, I would say this, or I would do this, but what this does, you know, being in the shoes of someone who's operating on a social media account, it forces you to to go beyond whatever your opinion is, which is really just they're just thoughts in yeah. the air. You know, these are <laughs> right. just these are just things that change that are arbitrary and obviously opinions and beliefs matter cuz they they dictate policy and they, they dictate what happens in the real world, but mm-hmm. to a degree it's like it really is it's just something that's hap- floating around us whereas what really matters is how you take care of the relationships in front of you so you have to really step outside of that bubble and right. care for people in a way which is very very difficult to do in such a hellscape as you described uh, right for sure because you get so many people that like you said the, there's the whole spectrum of political opinions and, and philosophies and stuff that are represented within our following yeah um and you you have to be careful because people that feel strongly one way they they want to they want you to feel the same way they do right and and when, sometimes if they you know message you or they tweet at you they want you to share in these opinions and, and share in their views and obviously as as a brand a lot of times you can't take a stance like that yeah and but you also want to find a way to let them know that you're hearing what they're saying and it's important to them and. It's it's absolutely a, a tightrope sometimes because and there's other people on the other side. If you take one view that they're going to feel absolutely betrayed by Steve, if Steve comes out and says yeah. he's, you know, pro whatever, he's he's pro chair and they're, you know, more of a, a couch person. I, don't, I, don't <laughs> I love know. how you pointed to the chair. <laughs> First he's thing pro I saw. chair. It's right here. <laughs> yeah, <just> it is. <laughs> <laughs> See that's that's how the mind works, right? It's it's just genius. It's perfect. You know? See it, meme it, go. Yeah. Um but yeah, it's it's definitely a tightrope. Yeah. Um and and a lot of times you're going to have to just separate how you feel from how it from how Steve should feel or how Stakem should feel and just kind of back up and and try and detach, you know, or eliminate your I don't want to say your perspective, but maybe eliminate your your biases. Yeah, you have to just biases. try. Yeah, it's a lot of third way thinking. It's a yeah. lot of just okay. There's certain matters which, depending on what kind of brand you are, like there's certain brands that are just open. Like a lot of tech companies are more openly progressive to certain issues, so right. they can take certain public stances that a lot of more traditional corporations can't because of their, mm-hmm. the way the market works. And that's a, you know just a crappy aspect to all this. But yeah, it's it's a lot of Everybody wants you to pick a side, and you have to sort of learn how to navigate in this weird third way space of I'm not ignoring the issues and I'm not dismissing them. Right. Um, I here's where I fall as a corporate brand, yeah. you know, it's like not like I'm not the president, I am not a politician, I am not your mom, I am not your friend, I am, I, am, I mean, we are the friend, but <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but but it's not like like our opinion, like a social media manager's opinion. On, on a political issue, what does that even mean? Like, say say I were to go rogue on the stake and account one day and mm-hmm. to start spouting off super polarizing political opinions, then it's all over the news. Oh, Stakeham is, you know, getting blown up by these crazy political opinions. It's causing this crazy division online. It's insane to think that that could even happen because at the end of the day, anyone reading the tweets I would make or reading these articles would know it's just a person as a social media manager making these statements. Right. It's not the brand. Mm-hmm. It's not the. It's not even the president of the brand or the CEO. Yeah. It's not these higher ups. It's literally the. I'm. I'm like customer service basically. <laughs> yeah. It's like a customer service person is making these opinions, but it, it has the potential to sink a brand because that's. Yeah. 
it's a really, really crazy thing. But I kind of want to get into, I mean, you touched on a little bit with the DMs and how crazy everything has gotten the past several months since January when the Verify Stakeum thing happened. There's been sort of points along the way where there's been spikes in viral attention, and the one being this whole Game Grumps thing. Yeah. So do you want to kind of give an overview of what happened there and then, like, how you had to jump in to help me? <laughs> right. Well, this this is funny because this actually, the initial thing happened, I was away at school because mm-hmm. uh, the program I'm in right now, it's a, a low residency program, so, like, eight days, there's an eight-day stretch every semester while I'll go and be on campus and the rest of the time I'll be back. Um, back here working and and doing my schoolwork, you know, at night or whatever. So I was I was there. I was gone, and I came back, and I noticed there's like a huge uptick in like followers and activity. And I'm like, what you know, what's going on? And I <laughs> it was right when you <laughs> left, right when I needed you most. <laughs> Which I was like, wow, I'm literally like the worst intern of of all time, right? <laughs> the only time he really needs me, I'm you know elsewhere. But um, we came back, and there was just tons and i'm not 100 percent sure what happened like the the guys over at game grumps someone decided to tweet something yeah, the social you. media manager of game grumps which is basically a gaming duo it's two guys who stream online and make a living doing it and yeah. they're part of a bunch of online gaming communities so it's a huge i mean they have millions of followers and not just followers but dedicated D- followers yeah. like we absurd when they started tweeting at stakeum we got i think like two or three thousand followers from this yeah. so it was nuts yeah. and it was right when you left so they started tweeting at me just you know making we had a little bit of a war we were kind of going back and forth on some memes and stuff right. and I was just overwhelmed by this wave of tweets. Yeah, and then they called for, eventually they called for the DMs. Right, where they said, right, right. You know, they called you Artemis, and they're like, <laughs> Artemis is going to lose his job. Everyone, he needs to reach X amount of DMs. 2,000, I think they said, something or 1,000. Like and, and we just got thousands and thousands. I stopped counting after oh, three thousand. It was absurd. Yeah. I mean, you just scroll down, and the page would just keep showing more. It was breaking our computers. It was, yeah, <laughs> it was. It was. It was so crazy. So uh, I I jumped in and and helped you know with managing some of those because a lot of them were just like you know people making the same joke. You know, is it steak? Um, right. Or, or something. <laughs> it's you know against I mean? the rules. Or just like or, or about uh, hot pockets. Yeah, it was and like they think. It'd be like a picture of a hot pocket with an absurd flavor or something. So a lot of times you just kind of, you know, say whatever you can yeah. to that. Um, but you want to respond to everybody because it's you know it's engagement and it's an yeah. opportunity to get you know these people, um, you know, engaging and talking. And with they're you. gamers, and gamers love this kind of weird online yeah. culture. I mean, obviously, there, people have pretty. Pretty strong opinions on gamer culture as a whole. It's very polarizing right. culture. But this, I, I don't know a ton about Game Grumps itself. I've watched a couple of their videos streaming, but mm-hmm. the community overall was very just light and funny. It wasn't anything. It wasn't like any alt right or heavy game. It was. There wasn't a lot of um. What do you want to call it? Like just divisive anything. Yeah. It yeah. No. Super, like heavy rhetoric. No. It was, it was just it like was lame jokes. Just pretty. Fu- yeah. Lame. Like kid jokes and, yeah. and just funny memes that were yeah just you know <laughs> which which is you know fun to deal with it's it's rough sometimes when you're dealing with them in like three thousand dm yeah, batches three thousand um, <laughs> on but, top of everything else we do on a daily basis yeah. and uh i i don't even because i'm spending you know like like three hours sorting through these and you're over there working through them too and we're just not making a dent at all it was crazy um yeah for weeks yeah. Like, there would be times, Literal like, just to give, give some context. I mean, just for people to know, again, off the jump of this thing. So, I, I'm the social media manager for Stakem, But I also manage, I think right now, six other brands. Mm-hmm. So, I'm doing other work throughout the day and throughout the month. We're doing photo shoots. We're doing recording projects. We're doing social media count, content calendars for other brands and all this stuff. So, there's other things going on. We're in meetings all day we're mm-hmm. with, with clients. And, like, there's there's other stuff going on. Pr- not Not... Like, it's not hectic every day, but it's regularly there's a lot happening. So to have all that on my plate and then these 3,000 plus DMs from a bunch of random people, Mm -hmm. we would we got to the point where I was having like I had to do other stuff, other projects. And I'd have Bob sit there on the on the Stakem account for hours, like three, four hours at a time. And he'd be 
so behind still. He'd be responding to ones from like four weeks ago. Yeah. That's how far behind <laughs> I, we were. I guarantee you there's still like probably a, uh, a hundred or a couple oh, hundred just more. There's probably hundreds in there. We can't even get through to them anymore. Yeah, just... tw- Twitter's got to work on their messaging system <laughs> if they're listening. Not intuitive. Um, but yeah, but it also it worked out pretty well too because in DMs there's a tons of opportunities for you to like hit somebody with a quick joke. They screenshot it and they, they send it out. Yeah, we had a lot of that. Yeah. A lot which, of fun back and forth. Which is good. That, you know, little uh, little validation after going through 3,000 yeah. messages and you see, oh, at least at least someone laughed at what I said. <laughs> <laughs> someone had a good time. Someone found me worthy. With yeah. all of this. Cool, man. Yeah, so it's it's just been chaos that the was, past that several was months. super hectic, for sure. That was a lot. Yeah. That was like a crash course in customer service. <laughs> it really was. And then, like, and then mixed in with all that, obviously, you have real DMs. So then that was a that was probably the most unfortunate part about it. It was real. It was a lot of fun, but like obviously mixed in with all these meme, gamey type people. You mm-hmm. have real people asking questions about product and all that that you have to sort of sift through to find, which was just a nightmare. Yeah. But there was we've had we there was like some. I would tell you like, hey, this. And I don't know if we can say the name of the the dude, but like the. The one uh, MMA fighter that messaged us. It's like, hey, dude, this, this oh, guy yeah. just Chael Sonnen. Okay, you Chael can say Sonnen it. Message Chael Sonnen Chael messaged like, dude, like, did you see this message from Chael Sonnen? I hadn't even seen yeah, it. He was, was like, just was like, buried. Yeah, what is it? Yeah. So, and that was that was a, a cool opportunity there. Like, and that's, it's all just hidden within, you know, uh, Hot Pocket right. memes. Just, just memes. <laughs> it's crazy. So, so that whole thing was like a real... I mean, it's funny to think about because obviously I'm managing the account on day to day, but it was really interesting to see you adapt in that setting as the person who's been playing like i shouldn't say playing the steve character but the person who's been writing for steve yeah for all this time you adapted so quick to the stakeum voice in a lot of those dms just literally from interacting with me yeah and i feel vice versa like there's been a couple of times recently where i've jumped on the steve account and like you haven't been in like maybe you were working on a school project and I had to jump on and right. I thought there was like a funny opportunity for Steve to say something and I get to use the Steve voice. Yeah. And it's a super weird <laughs> it's crazy, like right? developing voice together. But I mean that's that's the the great thing about like, you know, one of the things about coming from a creative writing background, <clears throat> excuse me. Um voice is super important and that's something that you know, you have a very distinctive voice on the stake account. Account, I think Steve has a very distinctive voice. Right. You know, on the his Steve account, obviously, um, and being able to like switch back and forth like that, it's it's invaluable. You know, cause yeah. You never know who's gonna when you're gonna need help or need to hop on something like that, and having the um, the established tones, the consistent tones, it makes it really easy. Yeah, and a lot of people who do manage brands specifically manage more than one so you have right. to kind of constantly like there's one brand that i manage or partially manage who well a couple actually i should say that are more female centric mm-hmm. in their tone so and i'm a guy obviously i'm, yeah, I'm a guy so tough. i have to except sort of put myself in a more feminine uh mindset when right. i'm a- approaching which is weird because it's you know obviously there's people who are like it's 2018 like why well, you gotta sound more like a guy or a girl but i'll in a lot of like marketing language and just in the stats that we use obviously like if you're a granola bar product and the company has the like the the nielsen data or whatever for for sales purchases of Mm -hmm. of your granola bar you can see okay 70 percent of our purchasers are female so you have to go by numbers in a lot of these situations there's a few brands where i've you know, we get in these kind of back and forth meetings. Like, there's especially snack brands specifically because it's kind of, it's like okay, like moms are the biggest buyer, but obviously kids are the driving force behind the mom. So it's like, how do you choose to speak? Because mom's buying it, but she's in- influenced by the kids. So right. there's a lot of uh, dicey territory in figuring out exactly. Like, like me- so those are some of my favorite meetings. Is the voice? Like brand voice meetings are amazing because you get to right. sit in a room with a bunch of people. Everybody's different opinions, and you sort of butt heads and figure out how to get the best. Like you're saying, like it's it's so important to get that really the, the best voice for the character or the brand, right? Possible the consistency. It's it's super important, especially when you're doing. I don't know if especially, but you know when you're doing jokes like or funny kind of posts right, and stuff. Right. Having a consistent voice it gives it lets the you know your followers kind of 
assign a voice to it. The same way if you see like a picture of Morgan Freeman and a text, you'll read and say, oh, it sounds like this, right? Or whatever right. it is. And, and that voice, it, it adds another layer to like the experience and the, the, the delivery because it's it's tough to have like comedic timing or delivery in a a tweet form because it's all just static yeah. letters. But when you have a consistent uh, voice and tone, it informs people how how they should read it and it helps them with their experience. And it's it's yeah, super important. It requires less work. Exactly. Them. Like there's that one guy. I think it's at uh, Yeats tweets Ryan mm-hmm. Ryan Yeats on yeah. Twitter. It's one of the funniest people on twitter i mean he's his following has blown up the past year he's he's at like two hundred thousand something followers and his i, I don't know if, i'm pretty sure it is the, the profile picture i'm pretty sure it is him in real life mm-hmm. it's a picture he looks very he looks like a young adult and he looks like a college i don't want to like stereotype and say he has to be a frat guy but he looks like he could be like a sort of college right. frat type dude under the proper circumstances. Under the pro- <laughs> sure, <laughs> and the circumstances do tell because <laughs> his tweets, so much of his uh, content that he puts out is this making fun of like college bros, and it's a lot of um, it's almost the opposite of Barstool, where Barstool is like sort of brash and makes fun of everybody else, and it kind of has this like weird. Um, like man, like you know, dude humor. Yeah. Like Ryan sort of makes fun of that humor. Right. So it's like, but it works because when you look at the picture, it it totally matches the voice you're getting on that account. Like exactly. You, your yeah. brain has to do very little work to put two and two together. Yeah. To get you see it, you get it. Bada yeah. bing, bada boom. <laughs> <laughs> awesome, man. So two. So okay. Obviously, brand voice has been a huge component in developing Steve and this whole thing. Mm-hmm. I just briefly uh, want to touch on like how much. Throughout the past five, six months, have you found the storylines to be an important factor in how you operate on social media, like creating different stories to right. tell? It's it's definitely a, an important factor for sure. Because when you're sitting down at a you know at a computer you know every day trying to churn out content that people not not just like to churn out content for content's sake, but stuff that people can engage with and enjoy. Right. The idea of like an overarching uh, narrative is is super crucial. Or also just becomes shit posting. Yeah. And that's and while, you know, you might strike a vein once or twice with it if you have something like that, um you're you're guaranteed you're I don't say guaranteed, but you're much more likely to get sustained, consistent reaction if you have a narrative that people can kind of see develop and referencing and, and we, we've we talked like that well you know in like stakeum meetings and stuff like that we'll discuss the importance of the narratives but for steve um a lot of his story is obviously just sort of kind of a parallel to stakeum so what's going on with stakeum for the most part is going on with steve but we like to give steve like his own sort of twist on things at, at one point we did um the book I right, f- Steve was little, writing a book. Steve was writing, and you were like ten chapters or something, it was right? Something like that, yeah. Just like little excerpts from it, and what was it called? It was like from uh, idiot intern to internet icon. That was it, and, <laughs> and stuff like that. And and people, you know, for a while they really they really dug on that, and um, I think there's a lot going because it subverted the expectations a little bit because by that time people understood Steve's yeah voice yeah. and how he is and the language in the books. Was was fairly like arduous, and he used regular punctuation, and it was it was almost like a, yeah, your fine writing, your your creative writing really <laughs> yeah. shown in that was, those excerpts, and some of them like I, I don't I might retweet those after this because some of those are <laughs> I, I'm a little too proud of me. You should put them know. all in one tweet, like link all of the ones. Yeah. you know what I mean. Like for there's two sure. tweets, like five images each or whatever. Yeah. Um, but that you know that sort of narrative building, people people would come back for it. You know that was one of the first times I, I asked for like. I did one of those things you say X amount of retweets, whatever, and I'll I'll post this stuff. And, and people were stoked to retweet it, and they liked, you know, to read what was going on and commenting. Um, and just using narrative as as a way to kind of develop the character, um, it, it's good for both, you know, me on the, the creative end of it, and I think for the audience, you know, or as the, the followers receiving it, because it, it just... Again, it, it informs, you know, how they interpret Steve, um, and it, it gives him something to either root for or root against. It, it's it's much more engaging when you have a narrative, when there's when you can get a sense of the story going somewhere. Yeah. Um, I think, you know, that's hardwired into us as humans. We're, we're, we crave narrative. We crave that narrative structure where, you know, 
I don't know if you call it the hero's journey or, you know, the idiot's journey. The we'll idiot's call it. journey. <laughs> right, where he's, go, he's coming from here and, you know, they, they root for him. They want him to, you know, maybe maybe he'll get a full-time job. Yeah, or, a lot of people have brought that up. Yeah. It's like, when is Steve getting hired? Yeah. Maybe we should do something like that next. We, like, should. we should, like, develop out the actual narrative to, like, like what is next for Steve at yeah. this point? Because you've been there a while. Like, as, as the idiot intern, now it's been, like, five, six months. Something so like that, yeah. Something's got to come next. Yeah, and, and it'll be uh, an exciting uh, installment of the narrative. Yeah. And, but that stuff, it's it's super important. Um, and I think it's really conducive to like creating if you have a, cause a lot of times people just say, well, you know, do a meme, do this, do that, make a post. It's, it's a lot easier to work within like, uh, not like a super, uh, narrow constraint, but if you have, if you have the lines that you know, you need to kind of draw yeah, inside yeah. of, um, it, it gives you a, a better opportunity to, to create, you know, more, um, focused content yeah. which people tend to respond to better i think that's a huge um avenue in which people on the outside of this whole thing tend to look at where they say they see what we do and they say oh you're just shit posting for a brand you're just doing right. memes you're just posting online there's nothing anybody could do your job interns could do your job and when you're actually on the inside you do realize that brands who do just shit post online Mm -hmm. Not to name names, but some just have no focus point or any yeah. rallying point at all. They dwindle out and they don't have a very loyal filing at all. Yeah. You know, like if you want to develop <clears throat> and it's kind of live by the sword, die by the sword. You know, obviously it's not like it's all, you know, roses with having an engaging following because their expectations are higher. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's like I was talking to Amy Brown a bit about this, the ex-manager for Wendy's. Wendy's right, yeah, yeah. And she was saying how. You know, people, when, when you sort of become something that on social media, the expectations are, the stakes get raised. <laughs> the stakes. <laughs> yeah, <there it> is. <laughs> and, and that really, it comes with this whole set of challenges. You know, some brands, some legacy brands that have, you know, great sales and everybody knows, like Coke. Like, mm -hmm. what, what does Coke have to prove on social media? They're everywhere. Everybody's yeah. buying Coke. Like, they don't have to, what narrative could they even push? They're one of the biggest corporations in the world. So it's, yeah. it's kind of, it'd be tough to even come up with something like this for a company like that. But for a lot of other young, little, smaller companies, like Steakum's, a, people think of Steakum because it has a semi-national distribution and it's been around for so long. Right. Like it's this huge corporation, whereas it's a pretty small family-owned company that has limited distribution. So it's it still has that sort of underdog feel, which we, we were right. able to cultivate with a lot of our fallen. And I think that that's really what gave the legs to the whole Verify Stakeham thing. For you know, sure. I, th I think there's a lot of brands out there that are startups or, you know, family-owned companies, small-town companies that there's definitely they, – they have a chance to sort of fit into this narrative building in some way. Even Amy herself, like, again, when ex-Wendy social media manager, she did this <laughs> whole thing – the past couple of weeks with Cheez Its. Did you see that whole thing? No, I didn't see that. Where she, oh, wait, yeah. She tried to get like tweet uh, right. Cheez Its to interact with Yeah, her. like she, she put out a tweet of her, a bunch, like a bunch of Cheez Its. It was just, a, and she tagged Cheez Its in it, and they didn't even like the tweet. Oh, that's so, whack. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Super whack. Yeah. Super whack. And I, I mean, they're owned by a huge uh, corporate. I think they're owned by Kellogg or Nestle, I think. So it's like a big, huge corporation. So I'm sure there was like levels of bureaucracy within yeah. the, the structure there. But yeah, like, they didn't even like it, whereas then she saw that they were liking other people's tweets, so she knew they were seeing it. Mm -mm. So then, and she's a verified account, too, so obviously, again, that's in a whole separate column of notifications, so right. she then started to harass them and just kind of be like, notice me, Cheez-Its, and do it, putting out, like, one, two, three, four, I don't know how many tweets a day for a couple of weeks just going after Cheez-Its, and it was like a rallying cry, because yeah. all, it was just fun and goofy and weird, like, People, you know, you see something like that. It's just so absurd. Just like hashtag verify stake them. Yeah. It just becomes this thing for people that are just kind of passing through on Twitter to get behind. And yeah. like, that's that's funny. Like, yeah, that's... they're wagging to for sure. You got, you know, with the stake them thing, you have stake them as like the, the, the underdog hero. And you've got, you know, Jack and Twitter as these kind of corporate <laughs> evil overlords. Cowards. Yeah. And it's just it's this battle thing. And, and people love that. They love seeing like an, an underdog come up they love having and it's a story they recognize so that like they know how to react and how to interact and how to um you know how to be a part of that sort of movement it's not i mean on its face obviously it's pretty absurd you know yeah. stakeum is 
this underdog, whatever. <laughs> but, you know, they the the actual heart of the story is just like, you know, little, you know, David versus Goliath, right? right? Yeah, Trying like you were saying, like the, the underlying tone is there is truth to it. Yeah. I mean, Twitter is a huge tech corporation. Stakem is a small family-owned company that was ignored. It, we got our verification denied at least five times, yeah. way more than that, before we even ran the account over the past eight, nine years of run of having that Twitter. So right. there was an actual narrative beneath. Like, you can't be... Like you, you can't be some company pushing a narrative that goes against the values of who you are. You know, right. if, if you're, if you're a, a product that's made of sugar, you can't obviously go like we're anti-carb or whatever. Like there's, there's certain boundaries you have to sort of work sure. within to pay on who you are and what you are. But, but yeah, the point is, yeah, it's just it's about how you develop that rallying point and getting Absolutely. people behind you. Cool, man. Agreed. Do you have anything you wanted to close on? Any any Steve isms or? I wish uh, I wish I had something prepared here, uh, <laughs> like a Steve speech. I know, like Steve, um, uh, I don't know. I, Steve's not a big speech guy, you know. Steve's Steve's uh, a, a jabber, you know. He yeah. just hits him quick and runs. Um, I don't know. Just follow uh, the idiot intern at the idiot intern. At the idiot intern. Um, and be forever well, I guess. <laughs> right. Be forever well. <laughs> That's a Stevism. That's a perfect right. ending note. Be I'm, forever well. I'm gonna go up and, and tweet that right now. Love Steve. And so then when people hear this, they can They'll go know. and read. They can go back. They go back and see. Boom. Dude, narrative. thanks so much for doing this, Bob, and for all the work you've been doing. You are fantastic and you crack oh. me up every day when, when we tweet out stuff like when i'm tweeting from the stadium account that you know you pissed me off i'm obviously kidding but when i do tweet out that you cracked me up or whatever that's <laughs> that's all legit the real deal. i'm laughing all day at know, the man. stuff you come up with i'm happy to do it i appreciate you taking the time and and taking this this wild heart of mine under your wing and and giving birth to intern steve <laughs> <laughs> giving birth to social media account. Boom. Intern Steve. Stay come bless. Stay come bless. <laughs>